So there's pretty much three fundamentally different ways of working with polygons. That's primitive modeling, polygon modeling, and sub-D modeling. So let's talk about when to use each method. So in concept art, uh, regardless of the type of IP being developed, the goal is to communicate design information about characters, props, and environments as quickly and efficiently as possible. For this reason, concept paintings are often done on top of simple 3D renders, as perspective information and even lighting can easily be created in 3D, whereas it could take a 2D artist much longer to accurately draw out all the fundamentals. This overpainting method is very common in the modern concept design industry, and requires a concept artist to either have basic mastery of 3D modeling software, or to get their modeling team to send over some renders to paint on. So in this case, we have a simple grayscale render here. Sometimes this is called a clay render, uh, just showing the position of some objects and you know, some details. In this case, the 3D model integrity and definitely its topology is quite unimportant. All that matters here is that the perspective information is present and perhaps even that the general lighting of the scene is defined. As such, these models can literally be composed of intersecting geometry primitives, so long as the resulting render is usable by a concept artist. So this is an example of primitive modeling, where we're really not concerned about the quality of the 3D models, but the only thing we're interested in is how fast we can get to the final painted result. If highly detailed 3D models are needed for concept design, either for concept paintings or for prototyping how a hero model might look, the polymodeling approach should be used. In polymodeling, and this is opposed to primitive modeling, the 3D model integrity is important, but good topology is still irrelevant. We can't have geometry obviously intersecting in impossible ways, or use any modeling tricks that compromise the visual fidelity of the model. However, we can still achieve good results in a short time frame by being able to use any topology solutions we like. Booleans are often used to add and subtract geometry to form precise shapes, without having to worry about topology issues. So this, what we have right here, as well as 3D sculpts, are examples of poly models. So we can see with this hard surface asset here, we've got uh, all sorts of nice little uh, kind of sci-fi looking details added in here, like these grooves and all these little holes and uh, various features uh, throughout the model. Uh, but we can see that the topology is pretty bad. This cannot be subdivided. Uh, basically, this was created just by uh, using a whole bunch of Boolean operations to get to the final result as quickly as possible. So next we'll move on to game assets. In 3D games, there are no computational resources available to subdivide models and render millions of polygons for every asset all in real time. Therefore, game models are also modeled using the poly approach. However, many assets, such as organic characters and hero props, will still be modeled with clean quad topology before being triangulated. This is simply because many things are simply easier to model when you can reliably insert edge loops into the mesh using predictable quad edge flow. So in this case, we can see some game-ready assets where the poly modeling approach has been used. Taking a look at the wireframes, we can see that the topology is pretty messy. Uh, again, we've used some booleans in here and uh, basically done what needed to be done in order to get a good looking result, but the goal here is to use as few polygons as necessary to get a, a convincing result. And of course, you know, heavy use of uh, textures and uh, shading to uh, sell a convincing look for an asset. All right, so let's move on to film production and talk about how hero assets are modeled for film and animation. So in offline production, uh, where we have 3D content, which is going to be rendered to frames not in real time and then played back as a sequence or a movie, 
in, in this situation, we have little concern for the number of polygons in a scene. More polygons just means more render time, and uh, while that doesn't concern a high-budget film or animation production, which has massive render farms at its disposal to churn out frames quickly. For this reason, sub-D models are used for film and animation hero assets. And hero assets are characters and props that are going to be seen up close in frame. This offers as much geometry detail and quality as is required for a given asset. Sub-D modeling, however, is usually quite time-consuming. There's often a lot of planning that has to go in before you start modeling uh, to get an idea of how you're going to problem-solve various parts of the model, and you have to follow all the rules of uh, quad edge flow. All right, so next we have mid-ground assets in film production. So these are going to be uh, props and maybe some set dressing pieces uh, that are used in a scene. And so if an asset will only ever be seen at a considerable distance from the camera, there's really no reason for an artist to spend the extra hours modeling it in sub D. So in this case, poly models uh, will do just fine for a lot of mid-ground assets. All right, if we look at these models, can we tell that they're poly modeled with bad uh, triangle heavy topology? Right? If it isn't noticeable, then why would we spend the time uh, modeling all of this perfectly in sub D if uh, the assets will only ever be viewed from such a distance where uh, such details are never even going to be seen? However, do keep in mind that if a mid ground asset will get framed up close in the camera, then we'll probably need to sub D model it to achieve a sufficient level of detail. And finally, we have environment modeling for film production. So environments and background assets uh, can definitely be done as poly models. Again, if they're only ever going to be viewed from a fairly large distance, then sub D quality, you know, rounded corners and perfectly modeled details, they're all going to be unnoticeable from the camera's point of view. So why would we put the time into it? Right, so we've got this asset here with subdivisions on. We're rendering about 3 million triangles. And we've got the same asset with subdivisions off. Uh, the poly count is reduced to around 200,000 triangles. And if uh, we were to compare these side by side, well, we could see that there's basically no difference. So what are we doing uh, rendering all those extra triangles when they're never going to be seen. 